the number of boys and girls are taking part in a quiz in the ratio of seven to four. So this is what we call, okay, part whole. Why? Because we know that the whole, in this case, is the number of students, right? And then we have the ratio to tell us, okay, how many parts of the boys, how many parts are girls of the total. Now, the next thing that is important here, the students are put into two groups. And then this statement here, this sentence here is very important. 30% of the boys and 60% of the girls. A lot of times students make mistakes is because they don't read the question detail, um, detailed enough. Okay, So a lot of times they read one time, they start to do the question. And then if you misinterpret the question okay, on your first reading, then that's it. The whole question is gone. Because method marks are given based on logical understanding of the question. So it must be equations that are logical. So students like to plug in numbers. Just plug numbers, oh, 7, 4, okay, 30 times, 30% 30 times 4 or something like that. Then they think that they will get meta marks. No, it doesn't work that way. You have to first understand the question and that's how you will get meta marks because you understand and then you can work logically step by step to the final answer. Even if you cannot, okay, get to the final answer, but if you work logically and get stuck, sometimes you still get meta marks if the method makes sense. But so please do not try to plug in numbers and say, I cannot leave the question blank, but I just plug in numbers. If you plug in numbers, okay, randomly and then put into an equation, most of the time I can tell you 80% of the time, 90% of the time, you're going to get it wrong because you have not understood the question. Okay, so please do not do that. Make sure you try to break the question down and understand the question before okay, you move on to plug numbers. Okay, now, so this is important because this 30% of the boys is talking about the boys, okay, they are taking part in the quiz. So 30% of the boys, okay, 60% of the girls, the girls will be four units. The boys we know is seven units. So what can we do here? Okay, later on, okay, I'll tell you what you can do. So students are in group Q. So usually if it's okay, part four, we try to use ratio method as much as possible, even for repeated identity. I think ratio method is something that most people are comfortable with and most students prefer drawing, uh, using ratio. But some, I know that some students prefer drawing model, which is fine as well. Okay, so let me show you how you can continue with this question. Okay, look at question A. What is the ratio of number of students in P and Q? Uh, P to Q. Okay, I give your answer in the simplest form. So what's the first thing that you need to do? You need to understand that in P, there will be girls and boys. In Q, there will be also girls and boys, right? So what is the first thing that I can do? I can first write out this ratio. Okay, so let me write out the ratio first. Boys to girls. Okay, I'm going to write the ratio that's given in the question. Okay, now, 7 to 4. They only told us about P. What did they tell us about P? They told us that 30% okay, of the boys, so 30% of 7 units, right? What is it? 30 out of 100. Okay. Time. Okay, 7. Okay, branching is also possible. Okay, so ratio, method, branching. Okay, or model is also possible. Okay, so let me just show you first. Okay, 2.1 units. Then for the girls, this is the boys. Okay, the girls will be 60% of for you. Okay, which is 60 out of 100 times 4, you will get 2.4 units. Okay, now, after I'm done with this, so what should I do? I am going to okay, split the boys and girls into group P and group Q. So now, the only thing that we know, what they gave us was about group P. Okay, whatever they are left, okay, the rest will be in group Q. So, what I can do now, Okay, see ya. Now, I know P would have 2.1 units of boys. Okay, I already put 2.1. Okay, so this is 2.1. That means, okay, my Q would be 7 units minus 2.1 units. That will give me 4.9 units. Okay. So that is the number of boys in terms of units. And then for P, the number of girls, okay, is 
2.4 units. So to find okay, the number of girls, this will be 4u minus 2.4u. I will get 1.6 units. Okay, now, at this point right now, okay, some students say, uh, I'm not very comfortable with working with decimals units. Although you have a calculator, you may not find that it's comfortable to look at them in terms of decimals, right? Then what I will do is, I will simply just multiply by 10 to make them a whole number. So if you multiply by 10 here, because these are all equivalent ratio, your original ratio also must multiply by 10. Okay, this is for students who find that seeing okay, units in decimal is a bit off, then you can make a whole number. That is easier for you, okay? If not, then you can continue to use the decimal, which is fine as well. So now, we want to have the ratio of students in P to Q. So let's highlight, okay? P, I would have 21 plus 24. Q, I would have, I'm going to use purple, 49, okay, plus 16. So the ratio here will be 45 to, 60, to 65. Okay, now, this is in plus form. This is a paper two question, right? Then use your calculator. Key into your calculator, press 45 out of 65. Okay, then you get the simplest form. In case you do not know, you can actually do this by calculator. That's how we express it. We express using the fraction button and then the top will be the first variable. Then the denominator will be the second variable. So this is the answer. Okay, so important to know, okay, which part and which, what part and what whole, what is the whole that the question is talking about. So it is important to know because sometimes students add up fractions, right, randomly. They never look at the fraction. So they said uh, 3 10 of the boys and 60% of the girls, right, they will take 30 plus 60. Can or cannot? Cannot. Because why? The number of boys and the number of girls are different. So you don't randomly just add. Make sure you look at the question and read every part of the question. Sometimes one a word difference, like for example, the remainder concept, if I add the word remaining into the question, the whole question changes. So Please make sure you read the question carefully. Now, next part. Okay, this is the part. There's one mark, but I think sometimes students, uh, most of them make mistakes the second one because they don't know how to continue from there. So you look at this question. The number of boys in group P, right, is fewer than 70. So I'm going to ask, um, hey, son, tell me, what do you know about the boys in P? What have you found out? The boys in P, I have this as a ratio, right? 21 units, right? But they say that it's fewer than 70. So what could be the possible number of boys in P? Okay, P boys. So 70, but it comes in 21 units. Means that the number of boys in P must be a multiple of 21. So can you give me the multiples of 21? 21, what else? Can be 21, 42, and 63. So I can't use 21 and 42 because why they ask for the word largest. If they never use the word largest, right, then there will be more than one answers. So now, if my 21 unit is 63, one unit will be 63 divided by 21. That will give me three. They want the total number of students. So total number of students, I already know from my original ratio, how many units are there? 110 units. So I just find 110 units. Three times 110 will give me 330 number of students. So every single word in the question counts. So make sure that you are able to pinpoint out what are the keywords here. Don't just jump into the question, okay?